Huck said goodbye to the ladies in the dungeon, starting with Reyna, the Queen of Hearts. You better take care of yourself, you hear me? The way you took care of all of us. And whoever wins is the luckiest lady in the world. Hook blushed and was muted by her kind words, sad he never got a chance to spend time with the Southern Belle. Next was his newfound friend, Tigress. She, like Hook, was a person of little words, but they understood their friendly affections as they embraced their goodbyes. He knew that was not the last he would see of her. Their friendship would endure a lifetime. Lastly, it was time to say goodbye to Allie. She was deeply saddened at the departure, and knowing she would never own his heart was devastating, but she took it like a champ that she is. While he held her, she whispered, You will always be in my heart, Hook. He squeezed her tightly, if only he could say the same. He cared for her, no doubt, but she would never own a piece of his heart. Currently, it was divided into four. And those pieces belonged to Smee, Matawaka, D, and Tink. The first to be graced by his undivided attentions was Tink. Hook had a special place in mind for the engineer, a place she always mentioned she was dying to visit, Windenburg Space Museum. She would always state while living in the castle how she could care less about traveling the world when she could potentially traverse the universe. And that is exactly what Hook paid for, a chance for Tink to do just that. When they arrived at the museum, Tink was in awe, dumbfounded. He listened, she thought to herself. He actually listened. He kissed her hands. He was surprised he noticed how much rougher to the touch they were compared to D. D. He made himself focus on the girl he was with, and glad that Tink was so happy. She was brave, he thought, as she placed her hands in the mysterious form on the ground, he couldn't help but smile at her moving from one thing to the next so excitedly. She even tried on some Star Wars gear that she drooled over, squealing, Oh, this will be great for GeekCon! She flew over to some bizarre contraptions that magnified specimens. She must have spent hours on the contraptions, ooing and aahing. Next, they observed a portrait of a falling comet, not muttering a word. Their hands touched, and before they knew it, they were holding hands the rest of their stay at the museum. When Hook told her of the opportunity to fly into space, she almost fainted from the excitement and ran to the roof of the establishment. She had to take some safety classes before her travels, but passed them with flying colors. Hook was not surprised at her abilities. The rocket left in a blaze of glory, and Hook found himself worried. What if she gets lost? What if she's attacked by space pirates? Is there such a thing? And what if she loves it in space much more than on Earth and I never see her again? He became quite uncomfortable. And just as he was about to ask the controller how much longer, he heard Tink's borrowed rocket abound back onto Earth in one piece. She was ecstatic. Hook ran over and held her thankful for her safe return. Hook, I'm starving. What's for dinner? For dinner, Hook took Tink to a fine dining restaurant called Bellagio's. Tink looked like an ethereal vision in her green sundress, while Hook was dapper, as usual. He RSVP'd their best table and was greeted with smiles and genuine hospitality. Do you see anything you'd like to try? Everything on this menu looks so expensive, Hook. Order whatever you desire. Tink loved his attentions. They ordered their drinks and meal and went into some pretty deep conversations about the state of politics in Windenburg. The closure of the fairies project, which Hook personally took care of while trying to find his beloved. His beloved? He paused as he thought. Was he looking at her? Would he be asking this question if he was? Before he burdened himself with more of this thought process, the food arrived. The service was impeccable. The food, delectable. The company, delightful. That much he was certain of. At the end of their meal, they walked to the fountain in the plaza in front of the restaurant. He dug into his pocket and threw a coin into the fountain. What did you wish for, Huck? 
I wished for your happiness, Tink. The limousine had one more stop, the bluffs, to watch the sunset. I know this is a very difficult decision for you, and honestly, it's an incredibly difficult one for us too, Hook. To be queen, to a nation of people, to you, it's humbling. Would you sacrifice your life, your privacy, your heart's desire, and give it all up for this kingdom? For me, Tink? You do not have to answer this question today. But there is one question I've been dying to know. Really? She was curious. Was he going to kiss her? There, in the sunset, by the edge of the earth? No. Instead, he tickled her. Wondered how ticklish she were. Now, I know. They laughed hysterically. I want to know something myself. Oh, Tink peeled herself away from Hook. I want to know if you can dive, Hook. She removed her sundress to reveal a bathing suit underneath and swan dived perfectly into the warm springs. He followed suit. The rest of their evening was enjoyable as they continued their deep conversations and enjoyed one another's company. So much so they didn't even realize they were holding one another at the end. You are incredible. Do you know that? You are an amazing king, and you will be a marvelous husband. <laughs>